local four news begins right now with a breaking news alert. We're actually following two big breaking stories this afternoon. The first one is from Mount Clemens, where police are executing a search warrant at the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office. The second one, two new measles cases here in Southeast Michigan. And the growing number of measles outbreaks here in Southeast Michigan. Top Star News at noon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Evrod Kasumi. The State of Health, Department of Health is reporting two new cases in Metro Detroit. One in Oakland County and then one right here in Detroit. That brings the total number of confirmed cases to 42. And there are new exposure locations, including a gas station in Insulani and a synagogue in Oak Park. The state is still urging everyone to get vaccinated. We have a complete coverage for you of Metro Detroit's measles outbreak, including a list of exposure locations. Just go to click on Detroit.com to stay informed. The other big story that we're following this afternoon, Michigan State Police officials executing a search warrant now at the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office. We want to show you some brand new video from the scene there. The prosecutor's office is right there on South Main Street in Mount Clemens. Eric Smith is the Macomb County Prosecutor, and Rob Maloney has been on the scene since this story broke. Rod, what have you learned about what's exactly going on? Well, what we've learned is that the state police are currently executing a search warrant. In fact, you can see that there are at least three uh, state police vehicles right behind me here. Detectives from the Special Investigations Unit from the 1st District uh, up in Lansing are executing that search warrant here. And it's an investigation into the forfeiture funds that County, uh, Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith has had for many years. And we've done a number of stories on this previously. Um, and it's coming from the, uh, the Attorney General's office I actually asked for this investigation at the behest of Mark Hackle, the Macomb County Executive. Yes, it's a difficult chain to follow there. The bottom line is we have a prosecutor's office being uh, searched and uh, looked for and records to be uh, pulled from Eric Smith's office. Now, uh, this is one of those things that we have been doing stories on, like I said before, uh, many concerns about the way the money in these uh, forfeiture funds has been spent. And in fact, uh, Smith had uh, decided that he didn't want to turn over a lot of the records. We FOIA'd some of them, got some bank records, but the county commission went ahead and farther tried to have an audit of these funds and they feel that the uh, county prosecutor hasn't been cooperative enough. And so that uh, led in many ways to today uh, raid here at uh, the office with the state police. Now, uh, Leon Drolette is a county commissioner here in Macomb County. We had a chance to talk with him today about all of this. Let's hear from him. I think he should be concerned about how he's been treating those public funds for over a decade. I think that uh, if, if it appears that laws have certainly been broken and there are consequences for that. Now, Drolette uh, provided me with this set of paperwork, a lot of checks from the account, and also county paperwork because they've been working on this, trying to get the uh, the uh, prosecutor to talk to them more clearly about what it is that went into these funds and how it's being spent and whether it's actually appropriate or legal. And so we'll be looking far more into this, hearing from some of the people in, uh, in Macomb County about the situation. I've called the prosecutor. He has nothing to say at this point. Called the attorney general's office so far. They don't have a statement, but clearly there will be much more on this later on in Local 4 News at 5 and again at 6. Reporting live in Macomb County, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All righty, a lot of questions, Rod. Hopefully we'll get some answers a little bit later today. Breaking news just into the Local 4 Newsroom. We're learning that a lockdown has been lifted at all Clawson schools. This comes after a high school student apparently made an online threat. And after investigating, police found the student. They were able to take them into custody. And again, that lockdown has been lifted. This was around 11 a.m. And thankfully, no one was hurt. But a different situation out of Colorado, where there is an intense manhunt underway for a woman deemed a credible threat to schools. The FBI says that she's a teenager infatuated with the Columbine school shooting. And as the 20th anniversary of the shooting approaches on Saturday, schools across the Denver area are closed. Joe Fryer reports on the search for the teen considered armed and extremely dangerous. Communities in the Denver area are on edge. Authorities on the hunt asking everyone to be on the lookout for 18 year old Sol Pais. This has become a massive manhunt. The FBI said overnight they consider her to be a credible threat to the community and potentially to schools, pointing to past comments and recent actions. She has expressed uh, an infatuation with uh, Columbine. Authorities say Pais was able to buy a pump action shotgun and ammunition once she arrived in Colorado Monday. Student safety is the top priority as more than a dozen public school districts keep their doors closed today. We take this threat seriously today. 
Concerns about Pais led to lockouts at more than 100 schools in the Denver area, including Columbine High, a chilling reminder of the new reality the country faces just days before the 20th anniversary of the mass shooting at Columbine High that killed 12 students and a teacher. These threats have uh, ramped up over the past couple of weeks just as we get closer to the Columbine 20th anniversary. Authorities say there has been no threat made against a specific school. Today, more than half a million students in the Denver area are not going to class. Joe Fryer, NBC News, Littleton, Colorado. Well, turning our attention to the forecast now, Paul Gross in for Brennerbrew this afternoon, tracking the calm before the warm, I guess we can call it, as we take a live look from our Windsor Sky Cam at the beautiful Detroit skyline, Paul. Absolutely, and we've got kind of a crazy situation going on with temperatures. Now, check this out. We have a temperature of 48 at City Airport, 48 in Mount Clemens, 54 in Port Huron, 46 in Sandusky. So why is Port Huron so much warmer? We have this east wind blowing. So Port Huron, your wind is coming off the land, but you can see the water, the cold water, that's having an impact on temperatures on the western shores of these lakes. And same thing with Lake Erie. So if you're near those lake shores, it's going to be a lot cooler than everybody else this afternoon. But those cold winds off of Lake Huron have also scoured the clouds westward. Look at this. This is bonus sunshine. We weren't necessarily expecting earlier today. We even had some thinning here in the south, but this is all going to thicken up during the afternoon. And it's going to be dry for most of us. There could be a shower or storm to the far north. We'll talk more about that and the holiday weather coming up in just a little bit. Everod? All righty, thank you very much, Paul. Back here at home, a jury is deliberating in the second degree murder retrial for an ex Michigan State police officer. Mark Bessner is charged in connection with a chase that ultimately killed a 15 year old Detroit boy. Local force Nick Monticelli reports on the big decision that's under consideration right now. Good afternoon. It's essentially a waiting game. We are just waiting for the jurors to come out of that room inside of the courtroom here inside of the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice to tell us they have a verdict. When that's going to be is anybody's guess. The jury will continue deliberating today, this time hopefully deciding if former trooper Mark Besner is or is not criminally responsible for this. Besner is charged with second degree murder in the death of 15 year old Damon Grimes on August 26th. Besner hit Grimes with a taser during a high speed chase while he was riding an ATV. Grimes crashed and died. The prosecution said Besner did not have to use that taser. This taser was deadly force. Is it reasonable to use a taser against somebody, to use deadly force against somebody in that circumstance? Meanwhile, Besner's attorney told the court he used the taser for self-defense. It's critical that you put that aside and you analyze the facts in this case. Why would he deploy a taser before he stopped? because he thought his life was in imminent danger. The Wayne County prosecution team did not agree. No yells, no screams, no gasps, no grunts, nothing you would expect from somebody faced with death. Now again, the jury was hung once when this first went to trial late last year. They're hoping it doesn't happen again this time around. Again, we don't know when this is going to happen. All we can tell you is stay tuned, stay with click on Detroit.com, watch for push alerts, to see when the jury will finally reach a verdict, if they reach a verdict. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. New at noon, a St. Clair Shores man was just sentenced to up to 30 years in prison in connection to the stabbing death of his girlfriend. Daniel Michelak took a plea deal in the stabbing death of Tia Bellucci. Investigators say that she was left for dead in a hotel room at the MGM Grand here in Detroit. The victim's loved ones shared some heartfelt messages to the judge before sentencing this morning. There is now an emptiness that lies within my heart now that she's gone. Her death haunts me every day and well for the rest of my life. Now there is a chance Michelac could serve only about half of the time that he was sentenced. Today, a man accused of unspeakable acts involving children under his care will find out how long he'll spend behind bars. Wade Perkins was found guilty on multiple charges of child pornography as well as sexual abuse. Prosecutors say Perkins recorded and distributed images of himself performing sex acts with a, a toddler aged girls. Two of them, he and his wife were supposed to be babysitting those toddler aged children. 
Perkins is also on the sex offender registry in connection to an older case. Prosecutors are asking the judge to give Perkins a sentence of 200 years in prison. In political headlines now, the redacted version of special counsel Robert Mueller's report into Russian interference in the 2016 election is expected to drop tomorrow morning. Last week, Attorney General William Barr said he'd release it within a week. Still, the Washington Post is reporting that Democrats will likely go to court to subpoena the full report without any redactions. Meanwhile, President Trump has vetoed a congressional resolution that sought to end U.S. involvement in the Saudi-led war in Yemen. The president says the resolution was an attempt to weaken his powers. And Attorney General Barr has decided some asylum seekers who have established they have a credible fear of violence can't be released on bond while their cases are sorted out. The move could lead to immigrants being held indefinitely. The ACLU is promising to challenge the decision in court. All right, so to come here at noon, close call. French officials are saying the Notre Dame Cathedral would have burned to the ground if it wasn't for one thing. We'll explain what that is coming up next. BC. Welcome back, everyone. As we take a live look at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, we're learning that the cathedral would have burned to the ground in a chain reaction collapse that firefighters not moved in as quickly as they did to battle this blaze. And in the meantime, we have new images of the destruction from Monday's fire that were taken from above by a drone, and it shows a gaping hole there in the top of the burned out cathedral. Well, this morning, investigators continue to search for the cause of that fire. Here's Craig Melvin reporting from Paris on what was saved and what was lost inside this 850 year old church. The damage only fully visible from the air, most of the roof completely gone, leaving the bare ribs of the building beneath. Firefighters apparently had just 30 minutes to save the towers from the blaze, battling very close to the flames to save the structure. Precious statues sawed away to reduce stress on the northern corner of the building. This is how it looked before Tuesday's destructive inferno, one of the most iconic and well-loved buildings in the world. The cathedral's main structure remaining largely intact, including those iconic stone towers and the three stained glass rose windows. Also, the incredible organ, all safe and the priceless relics, including the crown of thorns, rushed to the Louvre to safety. So far, roughly a billion dollars uh, has been pledged to help rebuild Notre Dame Cathedral. Uh, also, we can tell you that tonight, church bells all over France will ring around the same time that this fire broke out. Craig Melvin, NBC News, Paris, France. All right, Craig, thank you for that. The fire at Notre Dame is having an impact right here in Detroit, where a historic church is facing its own renovations. Local force Paula Tupman will have that story coming up first at four. Renovations have to be done to this beautiful old church in Detroit. You can see some of it from the exterior, old historic materials, but also, again, there has to be a way to make sure that renovations don't accidentally turn into accidental demolition. We'll be spending the day with a pastor talking about uh, his concerns and exactly how vigilant they will be to make sure that this relic remains part of our landscape. That story today at four on First at Four. All righty, Paul, we'll see you then. In the meantime, still to come, I know, I know nobody wants to hear this, but you might want to cut back on the bacon. We'll tell you the reason why, Paul, that's coming up next. Don't tell Jason Carr about that. Just somebody cover his ears. All right, you can see a little bit of the hazy, fuzzy sunshine that we have downtown here. We're going to have more clouds rolling back in, and we have numerous rain chances now all the way through the holiday weekend. We'll break it all down for you straight ahead. There are the simple things you should be doing to your vehicle right now that could save you a lot of money on repair bills down the road. Help me hang tomorrow starting at 6 a.m. Players now. Well, you were calling it the calm before the warm. Is that what you said earlier? Oh, yeah, we're going to be 70 degrees tomorrow. Oh, very nice. In very fact, nice. When that warm air comes in tonight, temperatures are actually going to go up overnight. You're, when you walk out the door tomorrow morning, I guarantee you, you're going to say, whoa, this feels like spring out here because uh, it will. Right now, most of us are a degree or two either side of 50 degrees. But as I showed you at the top of the show, if you live just to the west of the Great Lakes, Lake St. Clair, Lake Huron, Lake Erie, 
you're in the 40s, well down in the 40s in some places. So that east wind is just is what's doing it to you. And you know, it happens every spring. The lakes are cold until they warm up. And then when they do warm up, it becomes a nice cool lake breeze in the summer on those hot days. But you can see again how that east wind has taken the real cold, stable air off of Lake Huron. It's driving it westward and has scoured out the cloud cover. And we've even seen some thinning down as far south as Detroit here. But you notice more clouds coming in. And so that's going to be a bit of a trend as we move through the afternoon. But we're going to keep the sunshine for a while up to the north. So even though you're cooler, you're sunnier. And I bet a lot of people would take the sun over the uh, the, the alternative. So here you see just the big system here. This, this is a fairly well developed system and what we have is a warm front to our south and it's not very active right now but by four o'clock we're going to see kind of a narrow stripe of scattered showers maybe a thunderstorm well to the north of our area like the I-69 quarter and north of there and as this all progresses north through the night that ends rather quickly and we should have a fairly dry night ahead and again once this front goes through temps are going to level off and then start rising we'll all be in the 50s 50s to start the day tomorrow. Now the day will probably start dry, but we then have chances of showers and storms all day long. We're not expecting severe weather, but there could be some heavy downpours with some of these storms. And then this front, it's just going to be hanging around the region for a while because we have area after area of low pressure coming up along this front and spreading rain back in the area. So here comes another one that'll give us some rain late Thursday night into Friday morning, but it does look like we're going to pull that off to the east and salvage Friday evening for good Friday services if you're going or to your Passover Seder. And then on Saturday, we have another one of these lows coming up and it looks like by afternoon, at least, we're going to throw some of that moisture back from east to west across at least the eastern part of lower Michigan. So we're just not done with the rain chances. But again, the, the important thing is a severe weather threat, which is robust to our west, is going to stay well to our south tomorrow. We're just not going to be unstable enough to get severe storms. Again, we could have heavy downpours, but not damaging wind and large hail. All right, so 55 degrees, kind of an average high today, but again, you'll be much cooler near those lakes, and we'll, we'll have some sunshine, especially in places near those lakes. All right, 70 tomorrow, 50s on Friday and Saturday, but then back into the 60s for Easter Sunday, although we do have to throw in the chance for a scattered afternoon shower, Evrod. Well, all right, Paul, we'll take that. Let's start a good health now, and I know that a lot of you probably don't want to hear this, but you're going to need to cut back on the bacon. There is a new study that showed people who ate one or more slices of bacon every single day were at a greater risk to develop colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancers are the third most common types of cancer in the U.S. The study said processed meat, like those TV dinners, showed similar impacts, but further study is needed on that, so you have been warned. So to come here on Local 4 News at Noon, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is making headlines for a very interesting reason this afternoon. We'll tell you what happened when she spoke in front of the Irish Parliament when we come back. Nine per month. All right, so finally here at noon, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi was doing some traveling abroad today, making an appearance over in Ireland, in Dublin, Ireland, to speak before Parliament. But while she was there, she gave a shout out to someone that you certainly did not expect. Hmm. Bono and U2, one of Ireland's most beloved exports, whose music and mission. <laughs> well, she got quite the round of applause there. And there he is, who's there in the audience. Pelosi went on to say that she and her husband have learned a lot about current affairs in Ireland from listening to Bono's speeches at U2 concerts. Are you a big Bono fan? Uh, so yeah, okay, yeah, I mean. More not, of a Sting yeah, fan, I, I, I yeah, hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah, but well, we're going to enjoy the weather over the next couple of days. Yeah, and it, temperatures are going to bounce around. We're in the mid 50s today for a high, except near the lakes, of course, and then 70 tomorrow. It's going to feel actually a little muggy out there, too. But then back into the 50s Friday and Saturday, and we have rain chances uh, it, it, basically Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, even a scattered shower Sunday afternoon. So right, we know you're keeping your eyes on the yep, forecast for those Easter icons. Have a great day, everybody. We hope to see you again tomorrow.